But if I'm buying something now and I'm expecting a rise out of the market, it's that's with not fire. the buyer yeah. you're buying. It's just not. You're not. You haven't changed the value. You're not seeing something that someone else can. No one's ever lucky. I, mean, I think the only luck you get in life is where you're born and then you make the rest. Stick around. It's going to be a good ride. Too scared to wear blue. I've I've worn black everywhere. <laughs> or baby blue. What a, a stronger blue. Can't wear blue again. Oh, that, that baby blue. Wow. Hey. Hey, you can whip that out again. The baby blue. The baby blue. Give us something. I to just realised because last week we had the joke about the plant and the green. I cracked it. <laughs> no one laughed, but anyhow. <laughs> <right>. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> the baby blue. Great joke. You might have to get the uh, consume the single single consumable off, mate. Or we'll be bloody Is that out of the. <laughs> Oh, the red, <laughs> about the Red Bull? That gives you they're wing. Our, they're That's different. It that gives you wings. <laughs> I did reach out to them early on. <laughs> Didn't get much back? No, 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 we had a back and forth conversation because I was telling them about what I was going to do and I said, I'll revert back one, once I've done it. What extreme sport? <laughs> I just said, well, what ex- and then I thought about it. I thought it's probably on brand for me, but it's not on brand for what we're trying to do. You can't go promoting a bloody 35 cup of sugar drink these days, you know what I mean? Even known mindset, well being. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Got the rocket fuel <laughs> over there. I was, <laughs> I was looking at it more like high performance, you know what I mean? So but I guess how, many can, f- hey? how many high performers will be having that? Not Oh, this guy. This guy yeah. has a few. <laughs> oh, besides you. <laughs> you don't see too many people drinking them, do you? No, oh yeah. Or the sugar not, free. Not high performance. <laughs> Just to be clear, we're more, not we're not sponsored by them. <laughs> Let's make that clear. We are maybe, sponsored maybe here. at, uh, at, the, at the festivals. Different type of you see them at the festivals, they are they're all yeah, getting around yeah. with the Red Bulls. I think Benny might be sponsored by them. Soon to be. Flicks them enough money over the years. All right. Let's get in there. Welcome back to the pod, guys. We are the little fish and we speak to the big fish about town each and every week. We'll talk property, development, construction, mindset business, investment, all that sort of awesome stuff. So please like, share, subscribe. Um, Anyone who's going to get value out of this stuff, please loop them in. We really appreciate it. Let's get straight into it, guys. Ripper guest today. Um, Today's guest is an entrepreneur at heart, a super successful business owner. She's an author, an educator, a podcast host. She's an all-round business savage that empowers women, 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 to build, develop, renovate property and achieve their goals. Give it up for Rebecca Morgan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Was that okay? Uh, that was pretty um, good. That was pretty that good, was pretty good Holly. Really good intro. <laughs> that was really I good. Live up to that. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I think it's a ripper. Yeah. Rewrite He's pumped you up. That was good. Right. Plenty in there, Beck. No, no pressure. A bit to, a bit to work with. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah, heaps. Thanks heaps. for having us. Oh, no worries. Well, there's heaps to work with. Obviously, we haven't got uh, an eternity, so we want to um, want to break it down to a few things we want to tackle. We want to start with you're in the construction construction industry, development industry, investment mm-hmm. industry, mm-hmm. business industry, all that sort of stuff. You started out as a general manager, at, or not started out, but you know way back was, when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you, was a- you're a general manager, commercial construction company, but we just want to touch on heavily male dominated I'd say the industry still is yeah but it's got better yeah it is but like take us back to when you know when you started out and a little bit of that evolution and and obviously you're you know you're a bit of a trailblazer today so whether there's something that pushed you to uh go down the path that you have yeah I mean I've always loved construction yep construction's fun um and I kind of so quantity surveying project manager and um, general manager construction was yes. kind of the pathway awesome. if you want to go through the pathway. What I found was that it was really fun in my 20s because mm. you've got not a lot of responsibility, you've got a lot of time, you can work really hard, you can keep up with the boys. Um, and I actually really liked being a female in a male-dominated industry. I didn't. I didn't have. I know people go. Oh well, they, you know, were people biased or they um, treat you badly? I'm like, no. Why? Why would they? Mm-hmm. It's another person. Yeah. I don't. I haven't had that experience. Maybe one concreter or one tiler. No, it was fucking cool. 
It's always a fucking yeah. concrete. Quite a sort of it's like, bloody, <laughs> yeah, anyway. at Bricky. Bricky. It's because br- Bricky did it to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, we had difference of opinion. <laughs> but I guess the main the main thing I found was that when I wanted to have kids, there was no place for that in the construction. So it's like seven till seven, right? You need to get in early. You do long days. Mm. Big projects, a lot of responsibility. I was kind of growing that business and I loved it. We did a lot of, um, you know, like way back when, there was a lot of school funding, there was a lot of um, DHS work, there was you know, lots of different types, high-rise departments, but no place for me to have a family as well. And I inherited a couple of kids. Mm-hmm. So I kind of woke up, well, not woke up one day, I ended <laughs> up with an, a, a six-year-old and eight-year-old mildly unexpectedly and there was no time in my life for them because I was working so my my boss at the time said to me you need to get a house husband someone to <laughs> to yeah. clean up at home look yeah. after all the home things while you're out working I, said, I don't want to do that I actually want to do it myself so I um I resigned Mm, Not yeah. straight away. I gave yeah. it a month and I took the soft option. I went for family reasons and <laughs> <laughs> never came back because I didn't want it conflict. Um, but I guess for me it's about being able to create um, or to work in a business which is really fun and empowering but then also be able to do it with kind of the family mind and those values around. So those values for us are really clear. It's like we want to do one to three houses per year. We work within five minutes of our house because we've got a lot nice. of kids, small pile of children. <laughs> um, and, you know, everything fits around how we feel and what we want to do and what we want to get out of life. And we don't run it a race for other people. So we don't build for other people. I guess that's uh, – mm. we let that one – well, not the hard way, but we did have to learn that, you know, like because it's always exciting starting a new project for people, but then you just end up with a boss and I don't work well with bosses. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's kind of, that was the pathway. Yeah, yeah. Sense. Yeah, yeah, no, it does. It does because it's, you know, it's a real thing. We're, you know, my wife's at home. we got, you know, four young kids uh-huh. and she's and she's my support and that, house husband, house wife yeah. that you talk of that, that you need, don't you? So, you know, and we've, we've got um, sort of 50, 50 girls and boys mm-hmm. in our, in our office and it's a real thing and it's a progressive thing. And, you know, we want to be, you know, you want to be at the front of it, you know, you want to support these guys cause they're your team, but yeah. it's a real thing that women go and have children and, and, and it's a big deal, isn't it? Mm. Um, and they was, want to spend time with their children as well. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But then they still got that hunger for that 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 career somewhat as well. Mm-hmm. So where does it, you know, the industry doesn't really really allow for a two day, three day a week option that that you know well, unless you create so <laughs> create your own business and you sort of take a little bit of control of yeah, know, and it's, it's creating balance. So you guys do yeah. have women in the office and I work with some of your women that, that's great because they're but you've got that flexibility built in as well and that flexibility has come about now but certainly commercially it's less um flexible unless there's kind of a job share but people don't like the job share because yeah. they just want to deal with one person and and building's really relationship based in a lot of ways oh 100 yeah, absolutely yeah. that's the sort of conundrum we're going through at the moment because we want to start a family and my wife, she runs the business. She's the head of the business. She's the so, brains. She, no <laughs> question. Yeah. Pretty obvious, isn't it? <laughs> and and the thing is, like, what happens when we she does have we have kids? How yeah. do we factor that in? So I guess out the path we're going down is full time nanny, pretty much straight up. Wow. Yeah. And so the question I want to ask for you was it a hard choice leaving that general manager position early day? Like, well, was your there identity or? gets connected to mm. what you're doing right so and it had been like i liked having a big role mm. i liked being you know someone who could successful, sit at a table yeah. well you know successful and sit yeah. at a table and people would listen cause you, and then you've left that to go um and then so <laughs> when i left that because my partner builds so then they're like oh you do his books Oh. <laughs> that's the mentality, isn't it? Like, <laughs> do you do his book? Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh. <I'm> not there. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, that's the mentality. And yeah. I, I don't enjoy that. So um 
So, yeah, so in our relationship, only because it was easier, I am actually the registered builder and he is on site and we kind of do things together, but it's like he gets to have all the fun with the trades on a daily basis and then I have to make them turn up. Yeah. You're, the, you're the boss. you got the DBU license. I've got, so you're... I've got to do that. No, no, I really need you tomorrow, next week. And you're kind of the face tomorrow. of the business too, Beck, as well. With... Well, that's a different bit. So we have two businesses. So okay. we obviously build for ourselves. Yep. Sorry, I'll explain that. Yeah, so yeah. We build for ourselves. So that's John and I. We just build houses. We have a lot of fun with that. And then we've got Build Her Collective. So ah, that right. came about, and I've got a different business partner there, but that came about through – women continually asking us, well, I've got this problem or there's this, um, the builder's talking to me like this and I don't understand what they're saying or the architects put these plans together and they've come in over budget or and and basically people wanting me to jump into the middle of their their like conundrum issues. Conundrum. I was yeah. going for shit five, but conundrum, yeah, that's yeah. much better. But yeah. <laughs> to come in and at that point there's not a lot you can do because everyone's lost trust yeah. and that faith and that relationship, that working relationship yeah. is gone. But most of the time it comes from people not actually understanding what roles different people play and how what they turn up to the project with plays a role in how that goes or that no matter who you engage, you have to be the central person guiding that because it's your project. Now I'm talking mainly kind of house builds, not, yes. not development. So yeah, it's yeah. a bit different. If you're developing um, and it's kind of hands-off, like what you do, getting a project manager in for that type of role, that's perfect, right? Because you're going to know how know to any source ones, the land. Babe? I do. You know, I really do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I'll hook you up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that kind of thing is really good there. But if it's your own home, mm. you can't outsource that because you can't afford to pay someone yeah. what they'd need to and they're not inside your mind and the picture of what you've got in your head and what they're um and what they think you're saying often doesn't match so that's where build her started um it quickly kind of moved into people going well oh we like what you do mm. i'm like yeah because i have a lot of fun doing what i <laughs> yeah, do yeah. Yeah, i like it it's fun um and then they wanted to learn how to develop um in the way that that we do and kind of run feasibilities and understand how to set up their life around that renovating or building or developing for profit. That's an incredible, um, or how do I say it, incredible business model right there because it's not just females in the industry or, or clients, it's the whole general public don't understand building. And the same thing I see every day is a client goes to an architect, a designer, who at the end of the day doesn't care about their budget. They just care about, creating this amazing artwork or whatever it is. Clipping their ticket and yeah. roll into the next Give one. Give it to the client. Yeah. Then the client comes to the builders. Mm -hmm. We price it and it's triple the budget, but they've already been paid, the architect or whatever. They've been paid so they don't care. So it's the poor client left with a set of plans they can't build. Yeah, but it's so. an understanding as well because like – we had this one kind of case study. If you want to go through a case study, mm. like this one case study, and she'd showed this um, designer her images. Now, all those images were really like a $14,000 bath. Mm -hmm. We go, oh, that's what you want. We'll put it in. Yeah. yeah, yeah but, but she didn't know what she was asking for. Yeah. So you can take that same build and you can go, oh, well, okay, that that was a, um, I think came in at about a million dollars. Yeah. And they could get that done for around three fifty rejigging, not doing yep. the extension, but rejigging. They could get the same amount of use out of that house by rejigging it and changing the materials, because she had no idea what she was asking for, because she was just showing pretty pictures. Yeah, and that budget wasn't so clearly driven through that process. So it's just education, teaching them where to spend money and what what to be looking out for. Is that? Yeah, what you're and understanding who you engage, why you're engaging them, and being really clear in that engagement process. Because if you're clear about the budget from the beginning, mm -hmm. and not this thing, because a lot of people do this. Oh well, I'll tell you that my budget mm -hmm. is four hundred, even though it's five hundred, because yeah. I don't want you. And the then paranoid. they're like, but I mm. want, I want more house than that. So then they're playing this kind of catch up game because mm. they're not being honest. Yeah, we've, we find that sometimes. <clears throat> I remember I used to take a lot All of the, the sales call. Yeah, sales call early on in our business. And I'd, I'd get on the call and go, man, you can tell me, dude. It's cool. I'm yeah. like, I'm not going to spend it on you. You know what I'm not going to trick but you. But I can't help you. <laughs> I can't help you if, if you can't, if you're not prepared to tell me what your budget is or if you're sort of, if they're a little bit 
you know, they're, they're just not being straight down the line. You're trying, you're trying to prize fear. it out of them, right? Yeah. This makes it. And you're there to try and help them. Yeah, but and they're they're afraid. They're, they're afraid, afraid that if they exactly. tell you, you'll think that they're stupid, or they're afraid that if they tell you, you'll say they, you know, or you'll extort them, or, them for yeah, that amount, take sort of that thing. Yeah, without trying to work that dollar. But you're yeah, after correct. repeat clients. Yeah, correct. Yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. after kind of a, a single um, development. So you you're trying to set up that trust. You're so, trying to set up that relationship, and it does. You know, you need good information. Absolutely, hundred percent. And is that what you think your community? allows your members to do they get to kick off hey guys i got a budget i'm doing this i'm doing that and then you guys get to you need to do this you need to do that you need to do that well there's a whole heap of different kind of things inside it so they're, they're okay yes. so we've got a, a course an online course it takes yeah. you through the fundamentals it's got all the the kind of spreadsheets or the templates the things that you need actually hilariously a lot of um, starting out builders, are, it's really useful for them too because they're starting out from the first time and they don't have it all the kind mind. of um, templates and systems. They don't have anything for a progress I, claim or a tender or a – like they're just – you know, you're they're big, You're big on this one, Dan, aren't you? I'm huge on this. Yeah. Yeah. Education for builders who are just starting off because we, when you're green, it just takes one little mistake and you've lost your licence, you've lost your business. Yeah, it's a high stakes game. How many yeah. builders? We're not, oh, we're not good at business. We're good at building a house. We don't know how to run yeah. a business, how to track a job and do all of that. Yeah. So I think to have something like that's incredible. I think they're getting better at it on the checking process on the way through now. But um, it's, what people don't understand is that when you're building, so much of that job is paperwork. So much of that job is keeping records and making sure the work safe is site. Uh, uh, safe. The yeah. Site is safe. safe. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Ca- well, the, how to manage cash flow. Cash flow. Um, cash flow is a huge one because you don't get paid mm. and – most of these guys are younger and they don't have a massive amount of equity and that's, that's again, hard as well. And, and to be honest, the system is set up for you to fail because the master builders contract, they have two types of payment. Mm. There's method A, method B. Method A is an old system where you only get four stage payments. Method B, you make up the stage payments. So I always tell these guys coming through, you've got to have 10 to 12 stage payments per job. So you're continually getting cash coming through. But it's yeah. not until these guys join Build a Collective or, or something else to that get that understand, information, to understand yeah. this, and that's but why. But then they feel worried. They're like, "Why have Why have you got so many stage payments? There's only meant to be four. the banks. No, you, the, the the client. client. Oh, we we just say straight up. I mean, what's the point of the builder putting out three, four hundred grand of our own money at risk? We'll leave it out in the ether. Yeah. For, yeah, it's not. It doesn't make sense. What other industry does that happen? When you think about it. Well, and you're also paying for any materials that you buy up site because if it's not fixed, you can't get paid for it. Yeah. So there, there, there's a whole heap of – but you can team up with it. So part of the other part of this is we, we teach people how to team up with this type of builder mm. and run kind of a blended builder model where you're, you're working together to mm. create the outcome and there's a lot of trust and transparency and – you can help them through the paperwork because they don't want to be doing the paperwork. They don't want to be running around sourcing the best tile or mm. the cheapest tile. Often when you're building, if you're doing this at night, you're almost paying more to just get through the job Yeah. because you don't have that kind of, oh, I've got all these things sourced ahead of time because I've been able to do this clean quoting mm. system. Or maybe you have someone in the office that can do that for you, but you know, is that where the the... the opinion of the wife being in there doing the book work Book comes from yeah because you do need two people to do that role Mm. it's not kind of one person on site that can do everything and is this a reason why you decide to sort of build for yourself oh i really like an easy life (laughs) yeah (laughs) well some would argue that makes the yeah you've you're inviting all the problems, but I, I suppose you, you're taking control of it so you you guys control your own destiny and if you're good at what you do then Mm. you are going to enjoy your life yeah, so we like um, building what we want to build and we, we like this is kind of our creative outlet and John and I have, apparently we speak our own language, <laughs> something that anyone else understands, but um, it just, like it's just a nice way that we can kind of be a couple and we can build and we can create what we want to create and we never create the same house twice and we can just awesome. do what's interesting to us. So that's why we, we build. Yeah, like, and, and how does that go with... Job? With two of you, because oh, that's same as me and my wife. We love building for ourselves and doing our own projects. Yeah. Um, gets quite heated through it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, always <laughs> a, like, a nib wall. There's always a nib a wall. A nib wall. So, 
I call them enjoyable discussions. <laughs> is what they, what they are. So. Like, there's just one. Always on one, like there's one thing. Yeah. Or a skylight. Yeah, so who wins the arguments then? Oh, Dan, you know who we know who wins. No, I want to know Bex. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, I might have been told to build it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I can build it yourself, Beck. <laughs> right? <laughs> Only once on every project. Now, Beck, rewinding just a little bit, I'm s- yeah, super curious. Like, So it sounds like was it an organic thing how Build Her Collective came about? It wasn't like you sat there one day, you and Kara... Krabashny. Krabashny business partner for the peeps at home playing along um yeah so it was that it wasn't like you got you you lady sat down and said oh i reckon there's a gap in the market here let's make a play at this or is it something that's sort of morphed and evolved uh, over over the journey yeah well it, it kind of started out with um that kind of people were coming to us and we maybe drank too much wine while we were in <laughs> italy one time oh very nice as you do as you do <laughs> um and we just wanted to set up something to help people through that process the kind of developing and doing JVs with people and teaching them how to kind of, I guess, get ahead by using um, developing or, or building as a vehicle came out of people from there wanting to do that. Yeah. But, yeah, it came from people asking because there's no one set up in in the system. It's not the architect's job. It's not the builder's job. It's not the, the engineer's job. Like whose job is it to guide you and tell you what mm. steps you're meant to go yeah. through? So it's no wonder they get lost. They watch the block. Yeah. And they think, oh, I can do this and it's going to take six weeks because I've got six rooms. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like. And, and, and that's true. Like we, we get clients now who think we can come in and do a bathroom in a week for 20 grand. And I just say straight up, well, <laughs> on the block, what you got to understand is we got all of the supplies throwing stuff at us so I can get a shower screen like that. In the real world, I've got to wait three, four weeks. Yeah. That's just, the, you know, that's the, how it works, standard. And the budgets, you know, there's a lot of free things that we get on the block. That's why the budget is so low and people think they can do a bathroom for 20 grand. Do you reckon it gives people a bum steer? Because like, obviously the block's insanely popular and especially in the renovation space, so I, I, I tip in there's a bit of overflow there of the Build Her Collective keeping up with what's going on on the block. So would that be yeah, a bit of a bum steer as far as, what numbers they're posting on the block yeah. that the costs are yeah. relative to what's happening in the real world? Well, you can do a bathroom for twenty grand, but what are you what are you building? This is the thing. Like, yeah, yeah, that's right. What, what kind of bathroom? Actually asking yeah. for have you got a concrete slab? Are you mm. doing it on timber? Are you keeping all the fixtures in the same spot? What are mm. you replacing? Are you? Yeah. Do you want something yeah. that's got high end tapware and you know a bespoke mirror? And people don't have any. They don't know what they're asking for, and so if you if they can start with kind of the basics and understanding that, and understanding how that budget fits into their values, because you know it's all right for us. We play with buckets of money, and you mm. know, I'm not saying we have buckets of money. We play with bo- buckets of money all the time, and mm. so the twenty grand we can throw around. But someone might have saved that twenty grand over three years. Yeah, and if it goes over a thousand dollars, that's another two months worth of saving and working. And yeah. so you've got to be really respectful of how much that money means to them and the yeah. value behind that um, and and not be dismiss- dismissive because 20 grand's a lot That's of money. So point. what are you trying to achieve with it? And Hollywood, why? Hollywood. It ah, it's not going to work. Yeah. Sorry, find someone. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me when you got 40. <laughs> 80. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's um, yeah, that's super, super important, Beck, isn't it? I guess appreciating the budget, but helping them from the outset, well, Start, can, starting yeah. right, starting right, because like like you're saying, Dan, get halfway through the plans are never going to hit twenty, mm. the plans are going to hit eighty, but they've only got twenty, mm. so you guys so get where to do kick they off cut? right. So if you start wrong, so it's being cut? educated early. Yeah, well, what? they cut on the finishes, they cut on the their ten percent, well, right? I, ideally, so, they don't get to that point, though, do they? Ideally, their plans have the fixtures in place, they're staying there. You're not getting this. You're not getting that. A few harsh, yeah. re- harsh realities early back, and that's a bit, well, a bit right. of what we do is yeah. try and manage. And so do you, back, and, and you. Go, we all do it, wouldn't mm. we? So it's really trying to manage expectations relative to to budget. I think be upfront at the very start. If yeah. if someone did come with a twenty grand budget, we'll say, look, we can't build it for twenty grand. To be honest with you, but be empathetic and, and, and understand. You know, there's sure there's people out there. You maybe try and go down the owner builder path. I hate owner builders. But maybe that's the way you got to go. So why do you hate owner builders? I guess for us, we're like you've got all the liability of an actual builder who has the the training and the years yeah. of experience, and you're expected to build at that quality and warranty it yep. exactly the yeah. same yep. as a real builder with no experience. I'll give you my my personal opinion is very similar, and 
I don't even know why there is an option for this. Um, in a case study, I, we went and looked at a job. We got the design aspect of the job. I went and did a site visit. I went through the house and straight away, it was wrong. It was wrong everywhere, right down from the footings. I actually went to the level of digging next to the um, stumps just to see how deep their holes were. It was only 500 mil deep when it's supposed to be 1.2 according to the site classification. So now the owners of that house who bought it off and own a builder is suing them for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And this is what I say to people, if you're going to go down the owner builder's path, you're going to get taken for a ride because tradies aren't going to, they're not going to respect you. Because you it goes back understand. to the relationships that you were well, talking it's not about even before. That. It's a, they don't have the knowledge. Yeah. They, don't, they don't know how to read engineering. They don't yeah. know how So if you don't have the, the knowledge or the relationships, then you're sort of out well, in the see, cold. I'm not saying definitely no. I'm saying you need to understand where you're coming from yeah. and you've got to build your team around you. Slowly, 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 slowly smooth, and smooth for reasons. Sometimes and the risks. you can find this, um, I'm not saying it's rightly or wrongly, sometimes you can find this builder that doesn't want to take on this guy that, that that's worked out that he's not really good at quoting. Mm. Yeah, And he doesn't want to take on that risk, but he's really great at building. Mm. And so you can do that on an owner builder. Right, yeah. So you're using qualified trades that understand the process and they're protecting you. Mm. But you've really got to understand what you're asking for. And so a lot of the owner builders that we see, they've got a background or they're a carpenter or they've got okay, yeah. something or they're doing, they're doing work that technically needs a building permit and they can do it as an owner builder, but it's just refurb work. It's mm. not structural kind of big work. So they're, they're, I think there's a place for it, but I think people need to understand really the risk and weigh that up. In the, in the big picture because you can't just say, oh, go go to a carpenter, go you know, go build me an extension yeah. and expect it to be built right because they're not looking at it from that yeah. perspective. And this poor owner builder th- sold the house three years later. We've noticed this and it's still fallen under there. Yeah, 10 years. Like yeah. you're going to have to Is rectify it 10 years? That. 10 years structural, yeah. Mm. yeah. And, that's, and that's owner builders as well. Everyone. That's, yeah. You've got a building I've permit, never- you've got 10 years structural home warranty. And an owner builders have got to warrant that. Yeah, see, yeah. that's so such you're a risk, flipping, isn't it? Yeah, I guess when risk. budgets are so tight, I guess you go down this path because ideally you, you're going to build yeah, it. But that's the beginning of – that's right. That's the beginning of the end. So if you're going – because it's the wrong reason to go down that path. It's dangerous to me. Yeah, if you can't afford fire. it, maybe you can't afford Correct. it. Correct. I don't know. That's the ticket. The biggest thing we find is kind of water egress. And, you know, they, oh, they haven't understood that they need to do a freeboard or they've, like, ramped everything in so you've got mm. water going there. And under, you, the and, under the subfloor. Under the subfloor and then that turns into a slurry and then mm. you're getting big cracking and then that type of stuff is so hard to fix. Yeah. And you don't see it straight away. It's, like, systematically builds up on you until you've got, like, massive failure. Ten, ten winters. <laughs> and, but an owner builder, rain, rain, would an owner rain, builder know rain, that? Rain, rain. No, they the wouldn't start, know that. Well, the how would they yeah. know that? Yeah. That's yeah. not, you know, it's not even really on the plans clearly. Yeah. You, you just need to know what the you got to have the knowledge Wait, for that. Are. The, the, the owner builder digging those stumps. Like I've been that person before and you sort of go, that looks like about 1,200. Is that deep call enough? Them. I'm, I'm bugging. <laughs> yeah, call, <laughs> we'll call, we'll call get, that. Get, get the tape measure, put it on a bit of an angle. Like who has it? Meter. It's a meter. Oh, it's a true story, true story. Oh, no. I had to have, uh, I built a pergola at home oh, maybe six or seven years ago, two years, man, I had to have it restarted. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so so because you don't, even me who's been in construction all my life, you kind of just think it's not going to happen to me. Like the last thing they're thinking is they're going to sell the property and it's going to go the, down the road that you just explained, Dan, you know, so it's, it's easy to find yourself in those. She'll be, she'll be right, mate. She'll be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is easy to find yourself um yeah, you know, in a hole. In a hole. In trouble. Not one of your holes. They're not, they're not deep enough. <laughs> yeah. But so you offer the service of holding their hand through that process, a client. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, so we do it in a couple of ways. We've got kind of obviously information there. We've got a group, a Facebook group. We always say that like building a house is kind of like having a newborn baby. The only people who really care about you know what stage you build is that is someone with a build at the same stage yeah. kind of like a newborn baby yeah yeah <laughs> i thought you're gonna say it takes a village to raise a baby or something village to yeah. build a house maybe village to build a house. that's where well, i thought you, you were know, headed you can use that if you want you could, yeah, yeah, yeah i might throw that in next okay. time yeah, yeah. Fine. um but you've got that community of people who care and can help you source because when you go out to source um a white paint you're kind of like oh well, there's like 500 versions mm. of white paint and Whisper white. you want to have 15 f- <laughs> lexicon yeah. <laughs> um, you want to have 15 conversations about that to make sure you get it right because you mm. only get one opportunity to build. So you've got that kind of 
collective group of people who care and can guide you and can say, actually, this tile's amazing, you can go over here and that's... So they're sharing with each other within the community. They're sharing with awesome. each other and yeah. they're building on that knowledge. We yeah. obviously then jump we, with the course and then we jump in. We've got sort of fortnightly Q&As, so we troubleshoot... Um, we troubleshoot live any issues they've got or give them the next step because sometimes they just get stuck and they're like, yeah. oh, the builder said, you know, it should line up and it hasn't lined up. There's an issue and I don't I don't know. He said he'd fix it like this. Do I trust him? And it's 20 grand. <laughs> and it's 20 grand. <laughs> 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 yeah, and do they trust them? And then so sometimes that saves the relationship because they're asking us whether that sounds right and we can say, well... Yeah, because what you've got to consider is that you've got to rip up all those floorboards mm-hmm. and then you're going to have to plane them and actually your plan was wrong. So yeah. they've built it in accordance with the specifications and and so it is okay for them to charge you some money for that or, you know, no, really they should have picked up on that and, you know, you'd expect, expect that to be a level mm-hmm. floor, you know. And yeah. so you've got that kind of independent, I'm not buying into it because I've got no, no skin in the game. That's, that's good well, that's for clients a, yeah. to have because a lot of people go in not really knowing who their builder is. I mean, the best way to find a builder is word of mouth always really. And if you haven't gone down that path, if you've just gone for the cheapest quote, that's where these issues will arise. So to have a community to help you through that. The cheapest yeah, quote a, is a disaster and we can testament to that because I think when we first started, we were cheapest quote operators, you know what I mean? As you are when you're first starting mm-hmm. and – we learned some early some early lessons, you know. Like it's hard, I can tell you this, it's hard to get a builder on site and they're not making money. When they know they're three quarters of the way through and they're not making money, it's very difficult to get them on site to finish a project. And as you know, you know, when projects sitting there not progressing is costing you money. So it ends up costing you one way or another in the long run, doesn't it? So absolutely. Where do we go now? Uh, <laughs> oh, problem solved. Yeah, yeah, we're done. That's a wrap. Now, Beck, let's talk about. So, we've talked about building. You're a developer. Um, that I guess the part of the community that is the developer part of the community. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, inve- investment part of it. Yeah, not you know. Yeah. We don't have to talk about specifics, but oh, um, it sounds sounds super interesting for us. We're builder, developer. We're we're a lot of synergies here, so we're very interested, yeah. and 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 we know you're getting towards the end of a development that potentially there was some investment in there. Yeah, yeah, um, so we ran and, a JV. Um, and, it, and it sounds like it's going to wrap up really nicely, so yeah. Yeah, I hope so. It hits the market this week. If you sold by now, you can tell us whether it did well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cut yeah, that yeah. in. It did well. We'll put the price in, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it, was it your yet. first JV as well? Have you got experience oh, with JVs? No, I've done some JVs. This was our first one JV and with the developers in the group. So, in, so we run – I'll kind of backtrack. We run something called Developers Masterclass. So that's basically teaching people the fundamentals of developing from um, from feasibilities to understanding what you're buying, what to look for, um, how to market it, each, each kind of stage of this. Because as we know, it's big money we're spending and yeah. each area of this is, you know, the sales, the buying, the developing, the planning. The Each area is an aspect where you can make money or you can lose money. Yeah, it's a journey, isn't it? It's a journey. Yeah, and yeah. the way we do it's really different. So the way you like to, to operate is different to the way I like to operate and be different to mm. what you're doing as well. So we each have kind of passions that we want to kind of – work on so what we kind of teach people is value proposition it's like what is the value that you're bringing to that project which will see a rise in you know the the return mm. yeah for your sure. roi yeah. Mm. so for us we like changing changing use or just changing style or being able to take something that's not working and and turn it around being able to see something that someone else doesn't see um, and then obviously being able to run the numbers so you know what you're looking at because we we do find there's a lot of people that want to buy a site and go, our oh, subdivision works, that's really great. We'll just sub on that. <laughs> that always makes money. No due diligence oh, at all. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Power line at the front. It, like, 100%. You'd probably get a lot of people come past you. We've got this this site. It'd be great for a subdivision. You'd be like, mm. not really. Yeah. Yeah. No, 100%. Sorry. It's not a – Needles in not, a haystack, I would not, say. It's not like an ATM. You don't just yeah. rock up and, you know, the money comes out of it. There's a lot of time and effort. It is a long journey, experience, knowledge. Yeah, there's a fair. There's yeah, a, because if like you miss would, a little bit on all these little things, it, it accumulates really far, and you can lose money as fast as you can make it. There's no doubt. Yeah, you always you always got things to deal with. All sites have got their intricacies and that sort of thing. Some you can deal with, and some you can't so much. So it's yeah. um and 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 then even going back to understanding your numbers back, like you're talking about, like just because you found a block that hasn't got any encumbrances out the site. 
it looks like it can be subdivided, all these things. And then it's like, well, how much you're buying for, how much you're building for, how much you're selling for, all that sort of stuff. And it just doesn't always work. No, or it may work over time if you had value of time. Yeah, you've, but, you've but kind do you of do that? Time. Is that something you do? That. No, That's a good no, question. You don't do that. So you don't do that. You're, no, yep. no, it's got to work Comparables in relative to what you can and find. And so the thing is, if the market kind of drops and we're buying and selling in the same market, I'm okay. I'm kind of slightly protected. Mm. But if I'm buying something now and I'm expecting a rise out of the market, mm -mm. Playing that's with not fire. the buyer yeah. you're buying. It's just not. Mm. You're not. You haven't changed the value. You're not seeing something that someone else can't mm. see. Now there are things that are going to come up, like COVID. Um, no. You know, materials shortages. Yeah. Oh, like, there, there's been a <laughs> two years of our life. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been a few things like yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, 100%. five people on site. I mean, I don't know. Like someone came to site. He's a bank valuer, bless him. Came to site the other day and he goes, oh, it's really moving now. I'm like, yeah. We've got to make up. Got more than five people on two houses. It's definitely moving now. Yeah. Like you can't build, like it's extended. Yeah. People don't understand. They're like, oh, well, yeah, okay, you've got five people. I'm like, yeah, but I've normally got 20 people, 25 people on my site. Mm. So that's four months worth of work mm. that, you know, would only take me a month. Like yeah. those things add money. Blow, it's always blowing out that way. Um, a question I'll have for these developments that you're doing that you might have started pre-COVID or whatever it may be, how have you gone working around the materials increases? It's been See, a nightmare. the thing about being able to build for yourself is you can substitute. So you're yeah. not building to someone else's spec. So get clever. Yeah. I guess, you know. Take it out of somewhere else. Take it out of somewhere else, change it up. Um you know, sometimes you're just going to have to wear it. Luckily, mm. in this market, we have actually seen, you know, whilst capital we've growth, seen yeah. Yeah. increases in materials, we have seen that's been the saving growth, growth and that's for been sure. a bit of a buffer for most of us. Mm. Um, but if you haven't, that's that's pretty tricky. Um, I guess for us, it's kind of about being able to bring together a good value product. And what we were talking was, you know, the value proposition for us is bringing together a local team that's known in the area mm. and putting together a seven-star energy rated home, understanding the way a family wants to function and exactly what they're looking for and designing a smart footprint, which isn't any bigger than it needs to be mm. because actually budgets are blown in square meters. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was actually surprised when, you know, we chatted about this. Yeah. And I was like, how, how, how big are? were they? You yeah. broke a record. How big were they? It must have been mansions. And, and yeah, I was really – um. I would, I would actually enjoyed hearing it, to be honest. Um, 260 square metres, I think they were. Yeah, so about 28 squares in the old no, type no thing. No one uses it, mate. 28. I do. No, there's two builders here. We're square <laughs> metres. Oh, so 28. 28 square <laughs> so that's 14 each, so 14 each side. Can you speak no, English no, no, over there? It was 28. 28 is pretty big, isn't it? See, what oh, about? It's big-ish, but for, for the- No, for, not for a high-end house. For, okay. the dollars, like, for the dollars that- I have a high-end question. This might, this might sound like a silly question, but- Oh, it's probably not, but- you, obviously, you guys work in that high end space. Um, mm -hmm. Do you do you look at that and see that the higher end, it, by default, it's higher risk, or or is that not how it works? Does that make sense? It's about understanding where your levels are. So, yeah, it's in a higher end of the market, but it's not at the top of this market. Okay. Yeah. So, we're, what we're looking at is a family home. Um, these ones are family homes on 400 square metres and you're talking about – I still can't do the squares. So 28. 20, 20, <laughs> 28 squares yeah. in a single garage. And so what we're, what we're actually providing is as much as someone needs to live with a family mm. and a nice location and a great product. So they'll be architecturally designed. They've got, you know, stone products. We play around with the steel staircases mm. and we, we do have fun with our finishes and materials and we work with – fantastic suppliers all the way through and that's part of what we do we kind of build that value by working with amazing product um and that works for us because this market appreciates design and they want to live in a unique house and they don't want to live in the same thing that someone else lives in next door but they don't have two three years to create it themselves and they don't feel like they've got the knowledge to do it yeah so they'll pay for that product so so beck when you started out, would you, you know, you've got your market in mind. Yeah. You, you know who you're designing, yeah, yeah. developing, building for, um, and all that goes into it right from the start. Yeah, I know what my photographs are. It's not are just a sort thing. of scattergun approach. I'm going to develop this, build it, they will come. No, no, no. Not so and, much. It, and it's really measured, right? So, you know, part of it's knowing how we're going to sell it. 
who we're marketing it to, what are the, the what are the hero shots that are going to bring people into this mm. house? Because thinking about that stuff in the beginning means that I've actually planned it out and I know where I'm spending money. I know that I'm spending money in creating a fantastic master suite because people want an amazing mm. master suite. They want a really great <laughs> kitchen, living, dining, but the kids' bedrooms. They need to have a wardrobe. They need to have a carpet. They need to have a bed. Like they, they can be a little bit less um, over designed. And uh, architects love designing something on every wall, mm. but you don't need to. You can allow people to put their own touches. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's the brief from the start. Mm. Hey, Mister, Mrs. Architect, we want to focus here, here, here. We want to keep the size around this point, mm-hmm. and we can we can keep it pretty. We can stay in our lane in these areas. Yeah. And that's from the outset and then that's carried right through. Even like, could you talk us through a couple of the, because obviously we're all super interested, a couple of the things that you did decide to spend money on. I know know you said the size-wise, but like what are in these houses, you know, like. Oh, we always use stone kitchens. We actually. Natural stone. All all the way through? So in the Um, bathrooms and en suites as well? Yeah, we use natural materials. We like it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> a, lot, a lot of it is actually just being able to do something different and unique which we like and which we think someone's going to appreciate and they're not going to be able to buy this again because it's the only time it's been done so don't be better yeah. be different so stand We're, out Ooh. Ooh, like no <laughs> it's different always it different or isn't always right yeah you've got to be Still good different Mindful. is what he means. Good different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So still good but yeah. amazing different is what he means. Be better and different. Better yeah. and different, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, to your credit, uh, Beck, like since we first uh, come across you guys when, when you guys were sort of catching up back in the day. When I randomly ran yes, you. Yeah, random, the random. <laughs> <laughs> is that your sign? Yeah. <laughs> Can I, um, I drive through some sites? <laughs> do you want to have a chat to me about what you do? I'm really interested. <laughs> but I, I, do you got, do you kind of help the community as well with some of their choices? Because I, th- yeah. I feel like one of the greatest strengths, and I say this to Pete all the time about you guys, whether it be Building Collective, we were looking at one of your sites earlier, I can't remember which one, Bayview I think it was. Yeah. The choices that you guys make, whether it be build a, build a collective as part of your brand and your social and what you put out or whether it be the choices that you make uh, within the builds and the developments themselves, super impressive. Like I, I feel like it's not you – know, you, that's something that's diff, di- difficult to teach. You, you take obvi- a lot of pride. Yeah, you, you've obviously got a clear and- talent there where you've got taste and yeah. taste is um, not something I suppose you can teach. Well, you can learn it though. You True. can see, you can look. I spend a lot of time um, – Working and scrolling on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> it's work. It's cool. Pinterest. <laughs> I'm like, um, and that that's kind of what we do. We look at what's coming through, and we're looking at what's coming out, and we're looking at what's tasteful. And but we're actually always assessing as well. So we go back through, and we're like, okay, well, that house sold well. Why? Mm, yeah. You know, that so challenging project it. had a whole yeah. heap of people come on it. Not the one that just sold well and got the good number, because. You can get a good number on it without actually having the the people there fighting for it. Yeah, the market. You, you, know, you, the you market want a big behind. crowded market, don't you? That's what right. you want to create. Yeah. So as soon as you've got a project where you've got kind of five people on it fighting it out, I want to know what's happening on that yeah. and I want to back it up. Okay, so was it position? Was it mm. orientation? Was it the size of the house? Was it the feeling in the garden? Finishes, like, yeah. was it the pool? I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just want to pull that back through and go, okay, yep. well, what can I learn out of that? And we're constantly doing that. So we're always getting better and the market's getting smarter. Yeah. So you can't do what you used to be able to do. You know, that box on the back, just mm. buy a, buy a shitty house, throw a box <laughs> on the back, right? Yeah. And then yeah. you're definitely going to make money. Well, people yeah. have watched the block. They know that that mm. block, you know, that box on the back only costs 200 grand. <laughs> <laughs> and it can be done in yeah. how many weeks? Three weeks, four three weeks. weeks, three weeks. I, I reckon it's awesome that you know, it's, there's a shift in the industry and that we are, people are sort of going towards the better quality builds now, mm. which is finally it's happening and it's great to see that you're doing it and breaking records in the north doing it as well. Well, I think that's about kind of actually putting the effort in. Like these ones have solar power. They've got Tesla batteries. Mm. They've got um, cross ventilation. We've thought about the material use. We've, you know, the garage doors are thermally broken. So you you put in things in that you can afford to do because you've worked out that the market will pay for this mm. because they value energy efficiency mm. and they value that 
product. Now, I'm not saying that works across the board. You can't do that everywhere. That's definitely you gotta, not a you got to pick, pick your mark. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. yeah. And so that's about knowing what to do, where to do it, and kind of learning from what's happening and, and being able to run those numbers um, well. And I, like I know developers that will run 100, 100 fees before they find the one they're ready to commit to it. But, it, you know, people go, oh, my God, 100 fees It only takes five minutes. Yeah. It's just that no one, you know, you haven't built up the skill. You haven't gone through the first, you know, five that take an hour each to be able to do them really well. Yeah, correct. I yeah, we um, yeah, we agree. We we scour all of Melbourne down the peninsulas, whatever it is. But you know, I I, I don't actually know the stat, but yeah, the ones you look at, it might be one percent strike rate. Or it's a needle less. in a haystack for probably, sure. Yeah, and and you got to yeah. and you got to be able to be discipline with your numbers as well because what we learn as well back in the day you can make your numbers look however you want right you're you're the <laughs> the master of your own numbers <laughs> sort of thing and it's a it's a dangerous game to not sort of get some uh yeah get some i guess some experience behind you and, and start to build up that ip to start give you some uh some confidence around those numbers because yeah when you when you start i, I remember when we used to do early fees you can flip 50s around pretty quickly and and you flip a, a couple of 50s the wrong way and all of a sudden it stacks up and it probably doesn't or vice versa so yeah i think doing fees what actually i was going to ask about comparable so what, what do you do comparable so you're out because what you guys do is is different so I'd imagine it's a lot more difficult to go out because even just with the standard, depending where you go with standard townhouses and stuff can be sometimes tricky because you've got new product and maybe there's not new product. But yeah, so how, how, how do you guys get some confidence around comparable sales to slot into that feasibility? Yeah, sometimes that's tricky. Yeah. And especially, uh, especially and the, feel, product, right? it's, the well, product that you're delivering as well. Right. They're not all lined up along the other street. Well, that's bang, bang, kind bang, of bang, the bang. point though, right? Correct. Yeah, so 100%. I, the yeah. point is to create a product where I don't, have comparables, so mm. you have to buy this one because there isn't another one. Mm. Um, now, when you move to a new market, like we just bought some in Ivanhoe, yeah, development in Ivanhoe, and you know there are no comparables because what we're talking about hasn't been done. So then I've got to go, okay, well that was, you know, here's something that's loosely there, and how do I back myself into the product I'm going to create and understand that that's the outcome I'm going to get. Mm -hmm. And so that that takes knowledge of the market and then being able to kind of, I guess, understand the product you can deliver and how that compares against what's actually there and how people – because people don't buy a product. They don't buy just because it's got four bedrooms. They buy because they've got an emotional connection. Mm -hmm. And so what you've got to understand is how do you get that emotional connection with the purchaser? How do you get them to go through a journey? Mm -hmm. How do you get them to feel a certain way? And that's by using volume and space and orientation and light and and finishes and kind mm -hmm. of layering all that in. So when someone gets to like, the kitchen, they're going, okay, my, my knives and forks are there. That's <laughs> yeah. really good. And once they've done that, you know you've got them kind of on the hook. Yeah. So, so do you, sorry, do you sell off plan or do you do you yeah, obviously build well, it? Sometimes. So how do you get the emotional connection off plan? Like, do you do that's trust, the trust and trust and scarcity, uh, and, and through the marketing too, right? Because yeah. again, going back to I think what you guys do super super well is the way that you position your brand and all your marketing. Mm. The decisions are smart. They're 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 really really crispy and nice, you know. So that you can you can do it. If, if, yeah. if the product's going to give you the opportunity to position the marketing in that way, you can sort of build the trust. Yeah, and that's kind of where you were looking at that last project that we saw and you're like, how did you get that? <laughs> I'm like, well, but it, it's not actually the standalone product. It's this one stacked with the other projects we've delivered in that market with the brand name. Building confidence so with understand. the brand, and absolutely. Look, the people that bought that house are really lovely people, but broke know, now. No, no, no. It was a record. It's probably it's probably, no, it's worth probably even gone more up now, a million. Right? It's probably yeah. gone up half a mil. So they made money. The one that sells in a couple of weeks will probably make them a couple hundred. Carry on, Jack. Sorry. Feel a lot better. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You're better. You're better. Set that reserve high. Yep. But I guess they've got faith that we're going to deliver because when you're buying off the plan, yeah, that's more to the point got, for sure. You, you know, you can you're selling have a promise. things listen, listed there, but you don't have that. Yeah, and yeah, you're so selling a promise. Yeah. yeah, I promise you, we're going to deliver this exactly what it looks like. So you've got to have a brand. Yeah, it's got enough runs on. Yeah, enough floppy. runs on the board. Yeah, to, for them track record. Yeah, track record. Yeah, track yeah, record, yeah, record of delivering what you say you're going to mm. do. Yeah, spot on. Love it. Yeah, it's fun. Love it. Um, what's uh, what's on the horizon, Beck? What's happening? Builder Collective. 
you were talking about flipping a side earlier. We don't need to bunker into that, but yeah, no, what's no. Uh, no. you know what's what's <laughs> what, <laughs> property uh, mogul you? Uh, and what's, then the book the author? Yeah, yeah. yeah, what's happening in the in the community? You know, where's yeah, it headed? I guess there's a lot of people doing really fun projects. So what we're seeing is a lot more of these JVs coming together, where people kind of band together and build a site and get that experience. But kind of when you start out, like you've either got to use someone. You know, use a builder you trust. You've got, you know, and you've got to have that relationship. You've got to use people to manage that project, or you can kind of come together and share that risk and go on that journey together. Mm. So we're seeing a few JVs come to light. We've got a few JVs on the on the cards at the moment. Not all high end houses either. Yeah. We've got. So is that um, in the community? Uh, us go, and in the community. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Like there's a group in Canberra. There's a group. Like, yeah. so, so they're all over Australia. Mm. Well, there's people all over the world actually, but there's. They're all over Australia and they're kind of developing in a way that kind of suits their values and creating a lifestyle from that. Mm. Um, mm. And that that makes us super happy. They're thinking yeah. as well, this is the other thing, they're thinking about their future and where they're going to be and what they're going to need to live off and how that's going to come through. And property is a vehicle that a lot of people understand because it's really tangible. Mm. Um, and you understand what kind of income you can get from property if you set it up properly. So they're planning out the the life so it kind of delivers what they want it to deliver rather than just going, oh, well, I go to work and I, I rely on super when I stop working. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, we like that. Yeah, love that. And so, yeah, that sounds amazing. What a, like, I guess, supportive community that sounds like it's growing out of control internationally, I picked yeah. up on. Um, but just people come together. This is what I want to do. And then, and you've got a awesome community that's, that's explaining to people how they how they're potentially going to do it, how you can help, and then you're getting into that investment space as well that people can maybe if they couldn't do it by themselves, they can team up, yeah, team up and do it together so they don't have to miss risk. Out. Yeah, less risk for them, I guess. Yeah, manage, I mean, there's always the a balance of risk and return. So you put less in, you get less out. Mm. But if you're learning the process and learning those kind of sticking points, the first project we always learn a lot on, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we don't make and money, do we? <laughs> <laughs> and you might get out of it really yeah, well, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> you might not. Maybe you did rely on the market rising. Mm. Um, and so I guess they're able to kind of bridge that gap. But they're having a lot of fun. And to me, that's kind of oh, when it comes back to it, like you get – one kind of life to do what you want. So you could be like high flying, be a general manager and mm. kind of trade your hours for money that, mm. and you don't get to see or use that. Um, or you can kind of set it up the way that suits you and what you want to do. And that's, I guess that's what we really like. It yeah. must be um, quite gratifying too, knowing that you're helping set up people's futures and their families so many for people, years to yeah. come. That's pretty gratifying. When you think about what you've you created, like that, yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and, well, that's and how I'm saying it. Yeah, and we all know that the 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 chatter out around town because we've heard about it. I know we were talking down mm. about Build Her Collective, so it's really starting to yeah gather some pace and 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 um yeah just sort of be appreciated for what you guys are doing. How or, or, all the people that you're helping. Yeah, thank you. Well, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know that more than anyone, Benny. Starting building communities and yeah, things like it's that. Not we, easy we know to do. where. Building communities, you're building a community. Like yeah. I feel like the marketplace is just crying out for that sort of. Um, well, they're just looking that, for you know, honest that, help. That, you that know, platform, and that authenticity. They authentic, can get. Yeah. They can get people. that trust. They, mm, can, they get can get the trust, right yep. information. Correct. Um, because there's a lot of information yeah. out there and a lot of bad information, and you got to you got to trust where you get your information for sure. Because like we're t- what we're talking about is a super high stakes game, right? So you. One or two decisions away from being in a yeah. in, in a bad position if you don't know what you're doing. So you've got to be able to trust the information that you're getting because everyone loves to tell you they know what they're doing. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. Yeah. You, everyone's a developer yeah. or a builder and everyone knows everything sort of thing. So, and, and some people, if they don't know, can just latch onto the whoever tells them something. If it sounded they'll believe believable, it. they'll believe mm-hmm. it and then they'll go yeah. 100 yeah. miles down the, the, the wrong road sort of thing. So I, I think yeah, having reputable places where they can go and get trusted information, it's invaluable. And then they share, right? Because the beauty, that's the beauty of building community. You guys or you ladies started it and you sort of led the way and held the torch, but now they all help each other. 
and and it becomes like a uh, like a lifestyle brand, right? Where they're part, it's being part of this community of empowering each other and doing awesome stuff, but ultimately working towards a goal of, like you said, financial freedom or or, or their future and, and and taking it in their own hands. It's pretty cool stuff, and, and it is like you, you can't overstate how difficult it is to do what your what what you ladies have done, in my opinion, anyway. Mm. Bang bang, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, hundred uh, percent. Because I've I've been in on, online and doing stuff like that for a long, long, long time, and it takes special people to be able to rally people behind them, and then get those people rallying Again. the next back of people on their behalf. Like that's just not easy to do. Period. You know, and, and you ladies have got, you know, we know without the girls, we, you know, like I think Pete, Pete said before, we're fifty fifty male female in our business, and you know. There's all the girls that work here, every every single one of them are aware of and a part of and subscribe to or follow it along at some point or still do to build her collective. So it's a movement. I feel like it's a movement that's only going to snowball and, and compound as more and more people get success through it, right? Because that's how it works. The more people you help, the more successful it gets and the more people scream it from the rooftops. And that's why it's so hard to do because, you know, you, you need to be able to deliver because once you start delivering, then all those soldiers are out there screaming it from the rooftop. So he could he could do some marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you got a you got a you got a soldier. <laughs> ben, I think. No, well, I've put a lot of thought into this, yeah, it's and, your and space. I know it's me, your and, space me and Beck have sure. spoken about this before, like back you know, or in different sort of you know we sort of lightly touched on it, but we've spoken yeah. about it, Pete, and, and and it's just 100%. not you know that's the future about building community and sharing and, and empowering it's each other, right? and knowledge, yeah. In a way, yeah, and yeah. this is the thing that people go, oh, I don't want to tell you, I don't like, actually. Yeah. Actually, quite Spot a big on. company. I approach same as I did you, like running out thing, your building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ah, to me, I, and I, I was speaking actually. I go, is that you, Beck? <laughs> <laughs> this is my um, new job. <laughs> <laughs> um. And they they were cagey. They're like, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to give away my knowledge. Yeah, it's madness. I don't want to. I don't want to mm. tell someone else what we're doing. I'm like, mate, like we can see what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. But if you can just help people, yeah, share and, if you and can help. Just share with no budget, expectation as well. Yeah, and that's people will do it themselves, which mm. is awesome, or they'll get you to do it for them. Mm. Yeah, either, yeah either, right. either way, that's right. Doesn't matter. You're still yeah. helping and that community does rally and they all help each other and yeah. there's nothing negative in that. It's only when yeah. you're trying to take or sell them a yeah. property off the plan in Queensland that you get in, you know, you get yeah, in yeah, trouble because you're trying yeah. to sell knowledge as a product where you're actually... Yeah, and you're being greedy and, right. and selfish and, yeah, it's, it's not, authentic. not authentic, exactly. Yeah. 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 Love it. Love it, guys. Um, Beck, anything that you want to push out there, anything that you want to plug... You know, oh, no, can you take it away? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so we've got <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the uh, Build Her Collective coffee table book hardcover <laughs> with Hiroshimi Kravashni. Kravashni. <laughs> Shout out the coffee table book. Kmart <laughs> <laughs> um, and Target, I think. Is it? Yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah, nice. And that, that and that's, that's yeah. that again oh, that's backs up my point tight. because the that, quality what's, of what's, that book is insane. What's that like, about? Yeah. I've 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 had the pleasure. Oh. And do one. Photographs, you photographs of and projects. if you could sign it, please, Beck. Um, yeah. <laughs> Everyone wants a signed copy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just a, it's just again the process in written format, yeah. um, and that was kind of insane. I, hilariously, I told my dad. I said, mm. Dad. <laughs> we're writing a book. Says, Why don't you get a real builder to do it? That guy has like 20 years' Thanks, experience. Dad. <laughs> oh, geez, dad. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Because I'm only breaking records in the north, but anyhow. <laughs> and they're all original. Yeah. Yeah. So lucky. How does that happen? Yeah. yeah. All oh. original photos, Beck. It's not luck. From memory, they're all yeah, yeah, original they're all photos. Our photos. Yeah, which is crazy because um, if you go and look at the quality of this mm. book and, and the quality of any kind of book or whatever comes down to the imagery and stuff, and it's pretty nice, pretty crispy. Um, so Thanks. Yeah, congratulations. Pick them up. And just on the lucky thing, one thing we always say to the audience, no one's ever lucky. No. To be honest. I think the only luck you get in life is where you're born. Potentially yeah, well, the, that is luck, that's yeah. probably the only luck that you get and then you make the rest. Yeah. I hate what hearing you do that. With you, it. Yeah, it's absolutely what you do with it. Yeah. 100%. Awesome, Beck. Well, thanks for coming in. Any more questions for you boys before we... I just want to say, I take out. my hats off. I think it's amazing what you guys are doing um, and it's good to see that you're helping change our industry with building quality stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's awesome. been awesome. really fun. No, it has been, Beck, and all the best. Keep up the good work. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks again, Beck. Um, please like, share, subscribe. 
Share this anyone that's going to get value out of this. There was plenty of it today. See you guys at the top. Ew. Yeah.